Professional Tim Dreverman. The start of another prestigious class underway uh, down in ring one. The Colonel A.V. Pope Cup, a silver perpetual trophy. It's been run since 1950 for our gildings this time and quite a volume of entries. Huge number of competitors in this uh, competition. Great to see. Help if I rolled the right way on my spreadsheet, wouldn't it? This uh, magnificent trophy, as you said, first presented in 1950. The trophy was older than that when it was first used for that. But Texas won it with Miss M. Yates in 1950. The old showground, Moore Park. Here we are now at Homebush Bay. There's a lot of people say, Moore where? You mean the entertainment quadrant? I was there the other week, actually. I saw the old council stand. It's, it's a different there. world now, isn't it? But yeah. there are just relics of Should the old Sydney Royal. Do you know this is our fourth showground, though? Yes. Yes. Do you know, I, so you know where the Sydney Swan Centre of Excellence is? FDC, the company I work for, did that renovation. Heritage listed. It used to be the showbag hall. And I got to go somewhere where not many people get to go. I got to go down underneath. When they, the reason they had all the tunnels underneath there was to run power to all the different stall holders in uh, the Great Industries Hall, next door to the Horden Pavilion, now the Swan Centre of Excellence, as fitted out by shamelessly plugged FDC construction and fit out. I hope you're on the payroll this week. Yes. Uh, speaking of uh, wonderful holiday, brands, actually. the Thoroughbred Breeders Association of Australia are our broadcast box sponsors today. And amongst uh, the other wonderful advocacy work they do to support thoroughbred breeders around Australia, they have a huge focus on the next generation, um, including their Next Crop initiative. You and I have aged out, but for those members uh, of the racing world, the breeding world under 36 <laughs> years of age, you are encouraged to be part of Next Crop. Peerless networking opportunities, wonderful growth and development support. Uh, they exist purely for the benefit of those people in the industry under the age of 36 coming up through the ranks and uh, they want to make sure that you know the people you need to know and that you have the resources that uh, will help you to succeed. The great people at Thoroughbred Breeders bringing us Next Crop. And now, if you're not even necessarily into thoroughbreds, but you love your horses and uh, you want to make sure you're across the best possible horse care and welfare practices, tbalearning.com, fantastic resource for education. Uh, experts interviewed on there. Any way you like to learn is available, whether it's through video format or podcast or um, it's written content. TBA Learning is a wonderful resource for anyone involved in horses, professionally or otherwise. And uh, if you really wanted to get into the racing industry and uh, you are a spring chicken, like you and I, Tim Dreverman, are Dream no longer. Dream of yeah, wish we were. Um, the great new fast track program that they've launched, 12 months, you get placed at some of the top thoroughbred properties in Australia. You do two TAFE uh, semesters up at Scone, the heart of horses in this nation, and uh, really great support for 12 months. The foundations that you have acquired at the end of that year-long period through Fast Track with Thoroughbred Breeders, unmatched. Some wonderful graduates that have come through the program, the likes of uh, Abby Whitland, who did the uh, program in 2021 relocated from uh, down in Victoria to the Hunter Valley and she was employed at Godolphin Branch in the Darley Stallions. And, uh, although traditionally stallions have been predominantly uh, handlers and been male, it's wonderful to see Abby not letting that get in her way and uh, working up at the magnificent Godolphin stud. Well, another heat comes out now for the Pope. So this class so big, Lindsay, we're going to have heats and
call horses in. So some horses, that's their turn done, all that preparation and uh, work for agricultural show winners because every horse here has won their way in. And uh, they'll go in around the arena and uh, didn't quite catch the eye of the judge today and unfortunately that is, that's the show world, isn't it? Yes, uh, interesting to hear Warren Prattley's comments on the winner of the um, Yes, party. I like he that. He just said there was only one we, winner. we had a winner. Yeah. So, because I was up here, I didn't see that the, the winner actually never went back out on the circle. No. no. Well, what they had done was said, look, we like a number of horses here to contend for reserve or second. Um, let's put them back on the circle and make our call. And it went the way of Misty Creek Park. So did they tell the competitors that? Did Ali, or did all the competitors lined up think, oh, maybe it is me that, that's won? I don't know that it was communicated. It wasn't part of that conversation. But, you know, and, and at Royal Show level too, you, as a competitor, you just do what you're told, don't you? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> no, I was just interested to the... Yeah. To the, to the drama of that. Yes. It was, oh, yes. It was interesting. The, the cheer when we let out, read out Ali, Ali's uh, name, and mm. she's obviously very well known in the show horse arena, but uh, even I could hear it up here in my air-conditioned glass box that they keep us held away in. Isn't All that thanks interesting? Thanks to thoroughbred breeders. Both of, those, uh, both of those successful competitors very early in their showing career. Both horses, yeah. Mm. Not riders. No, absolutely I, not. I travelled to Brisbane Echo with Simon Delu way back in... 2002. One of my favourite Simon Delu moments, and this is a little bit. Um, I'm going to tell you one. Then, this if is self-serving to say, but one year Simon, like phenomenal show rider, um, we're at Grand National, and he had this totally unfortunate accident that's prohibited him from riding. Well, I was the beneficiary because I've got to do 15 hours of live stream every day. I said, Simon, come up and here in your, your wheelchair. Popped a microphone on him, and uh, it was one of the easiest jobs I've ever done. I was going to tell you a mean story. I won't tell you my story now. It was how he put unleaded fuel in a diesel car. It doesn't work so well, but I won't tell you that story. That wouldn't be very nice, would it, to do that here in the broadcast box? Now, imagine if it was uh, held in perpetuity on a live stream. Just imagine. Well, the results of class number 1A3 about to come to us. And boy, have we had a fantastic day with our ponies today. It's just been really special to see the lineup here. And you and I get a phenomenal vantage because we sit right in front of Sydney Royal Stand. But in the interim, we have the results now from our Arabian derivative Colt class under three years of age. And isn't Dr. Sarah Bowman having a show? From Glossodia, catalogue number 1000 takes the win. Valar Park, Filet Grove. Second place to 1002, it's Joe Moore Sterling, exhibited by Joe Moore Pony Stud, Laurie Howell, Katrina and Phoebe Spadirkus. Congratulations. Another ribbon straight to the pool room. They have quite the collection there. I hope they've got a full-size billiard table in their pool room because otherwise they won't fit everything on the wall. Well, results now of class number 183, the Australian saddle pony mare or gelding over 12-2 and not exceeding 13-2 hands. Congratulations to our winner, catalogue number 1430, Miss Sofa Nungeon's nomination of Eleonora Park Candyman. Second place 
catalogue number 1387, Willow Cross Stud and Amanda Jeffries nomination of SPB, Ginger Rogers. Third place, go to catalogue number 1413, Miss Chelsea Johnson's nomination of White Hill Medicine Man. Fourth place, go to catalogue number 105E, it is the Paul Austin Equine and Sally Williams nomination of Kaida Script. Fifth place, go to catalogue number 1380, that is Mrs Ruth Anderson's nomination of Bells Mountain Porsche. Sixth place, catalogue number 1055, Miss Allenton, Alison Penhall's nomination of Kenyon Kisar. So congratulations to winner and place getters of uh, class number 183. We now roll on to class number 182, because why would you go up when you can go back down in your numbers just to keep me on my toes? This is the Australian Saddle Pony Mare or Gilding, not exceeding 12.2 hands in height. Nice opportunity to introduce our two judges, well, the Colonel A.V. Pope Cup this afternoon, Sally McFadgen, very well known in the showing world, though hasn't competed for quite some years, uh, has judged for over 30 years, based in Sydney. I was judging our novice hacks the other day and will be uh, also judging our adult rider classes. Over the years, she's also judged ponies and galloways. And, uh, wonderful to have her back today. She's judging alongside Mr. Warren Prattley, who has won the Crane Trophy in the past. And based at the Southern Highlands, he's been judging our lead thoroughbreds this morning and, of course, the ridden classes this afternoon. He's been judging for over 50 years. And interestingly, he's, was, he judged on the last year, last Sydney Royal at Moore Park and the first Sydney Royal at Olympic Park. And he judged in uh, 1986, has... Uh, had a really great history, has competed uh, very successfully. And he loves these classes, the Pope and the Crane, because they highlight the versatility of the off-the-track racehorse and showcase the thoroughbred breed at the highest level of competition. Well, the first to work out for the Colonel A.V. Pope will be catalogue number 1771, race to Zunate. And uh, won over $77,000. 32 starts for three wins, eight seconds 
and five thirds. Had its most significant uh, win up at Mount Isa. This is Zunate. Well, onto the live stream, uh, we can share a little bit with you in terms of uh, this horse's racing, uh, this horse's showing background, I should say. Show name is Chorus. It's being exhibited today by Riley Kent, side by Zoostar, and out of the dam, fascinating. This is catalogue number 1821, working out in the Colonel A.V. Pope. Didn't race as far as my research shows, but had a racing name of Hoover Dam. Sired by Headwater and out of the day, Miss Swan Lake shows as hierarchy, and this is exhibited by Lee Sears. Now working out for the Colonel A.V. Pope Cup is catalogue number 1922, raced as Running Ralph. Three starts and uh, no wins, was based at Musselbrook. What a great race name, Running Ralph. Love that.
and shows as Monument and uh, Georgia Daly, side by Reddy's image, out of So Impressed. And uh, was successful in our novice hack class yesterday. Over 15 to a not exceeding 16 hands, took out the win. Well, we can see catalogue number 1772 working out now. Raced as Riverside Theatre. Eight starts. Twice placed third. And was based on the Gold Coast. Sired by Reduce Choice and out of the damn star reel. Shown under the name Arafield, and Arafield have actually been wonderful supporters today again throughout our lead thoroughbred classes. Christopher Laurie, our exhibitor.
people over in ring one. This exhibit won over $60,000 on the racetrack, raced as Shoreditch. He's uh, based at Mackay with Lyle Wright, the trainer. Won a $22,000 class one handicap at Port Macquarie, ridden by Robert Thompson. Last race at Rockhampton in 2019. This is Sheridan Wyatt's nomination. Shown as rivalry, has had great success in the showing arena too. Side by Piero, out of Delta Girl. The results now of class number 31, the Arabian Derivative Stallion or Colt, three years and over, not exceeding 14 hands. Congratulations to our winner. Catalogue number 1004. This is Belinda Shepley's nomination of Songbird Lodge Kung Fu. Second place, going to catalogue number 1005, the Willow Croft Stud and Miss Amanda Jeffrey's nomination of SPB Noble Dynasty. So congratulations to winner and place getter of class number 31, the Arabian Derivative Stallion Colt, three years and over, not exceeding 14 hands. In the Pope Cup, we welcome out 1926 raced as Catalora. Had one win, one second place, one third place. Is based at Oakey in Queensland. Exhibited here today with Miss Jacqueline Schofield. Shows as Croxley Silence. Side by Sequalo. We're bringing you today our live stream from the Thoroughbred Breeders Australia broadcast box. We've been celebrating all of the wonderful initiatives of TBA with regards to the next generation coming through from their fast track program. 12 months of uh, phenomenal support and training at Thoroughbred Studs, through TAFE in Scone and uh, through their own networks at Thoroughbred Breeders their online learning platform, tbalearning.com. And for those thoroughbred breeders under the age of 36, they have the Next Crop program, fantastic for networking, mentoring, and uh, access to all of the best and brightest in the industry. A big thanks to thoroughbred breeders for their support of our coverage here on day, day eight of the Sydney Royal Easter Show.
we've just seen the horse that raced as Dandy Idea in the Pope. It, uh, had nine starts, one third place. And was based with uh, Leanne McCormick, who trained her out of, trained him, I should say, out of the Gold Coast. Shows as SG Finale, side by So You Think and Out of the Dam, Daniel Pear. Was exhibited by Megan Baldock and Rebecca Patterson. Working out in ring one now, catalogue number 1806, raced as Octillion. Another that only had a few starts. Got a third place at Pinjara Park. And uh, racing career finished in 2016. Exhibited by Francine Treneman Duncan and well, Francine Treneman and Kate Treneman Duncan. Shown as Octane, side by Octagonal. Out of Naturalist. And this is catalogue number 1806. Well, Pinjarra Park is actually a Western Australian racetrack, Lindsay Douglas, just based south of uh, Perth. It's off the coast, just down from uh, Mandura. Pinjarra Park, lovely picnic races there, according to google.com.au. <laughs> Wasn't it brilliant to hear Cecilia O'Gorman tell us earlier today uh, about the connection between city and country racing and how that is forged and deepened with each year. But there's 80,000 people employed across the breeding and racing industry in Australia. Huge numbers, huge industry. I've really liked here in New South Wales seeing the big dance, the barn dance and the little dance at uh, Randwick and uh, celebrating our country trainers. But I tell you, if you haven't ever been to a country race day, wherever it is around New South Wales or Australia, make sure you go because it is a day you'll never forget. I'm partial to a picnic race day, I have to say. Come by chance picnic races. Bajerabong. Yes. Kondobolan. Kudamundra. Kuma. Where else do you want to go? Duck Creek. Duck Creek. What about Wallabadar? It's a good one. It's a great one. We're now watching the workout of catalogue 1169. Raced as Storm Dancer. Did make some money on the track. 168,029 career starts for four wins. Had a win at Ascot. $60,000 in a three-year-old handicap. Defeating Wrinkley. Finished racing in 2020. Is also shown as Storm Dancer by the Benton and Benton Hall family. Sired by Musket out of City Living.
Well, we turn our attention now to uh, the far side of the arena, ring number four for class number 612, the working hunter pony over 12 to not exceeding 14 hands. Congratulations to our winner, catalogue number 1383. This is Vanessa Galloway Smith's nomination, Bambra Lady Jody, out of Bambra Royal Request, by Bambra Royal Request, I should say, out of Bambra Lady Jocelyn. Roy, as he's known, the sire, he was a great show jumper himself. Second place, going to catalogue number 1906, Miss Natasha Pembroke Prize and Miss Mini Pembroke Prize nomination, BHM Diana. Third place, going to catalogue number 1391, Miss Taryn Schnell's nomination of Woodstock Eclair. Fourth place, catalogue number 2046, Miss Belinda nomination, Miss... Uh, Belinda's nomination of Mira Booker, Napoleon Dynamite, and fifth place going to catalogue number 1086, Miss Jessica Armstrong's nomination of Waruna Spellbound. Well done to the winner and place getters. It was Bambra, Lady Jody, our winner here this afternoon. Tim Treverman in the Pope Cup. We're watching the workout of 1941, raced as Golden Boy, made just over $20,000. Well, Joe Bailey shows this gelding as Double Bay took out champion off the track thoroughbred at Canberra Royal earlier this year. Well, next in the Pope Cup, we welcome out number 1819, raced as the man, won $54,000, eight starts, one win. And uh, that win was under Hugh Bowman at Canterbury Park back in 2020 in a $50,000 maiden handicap. Well, we turn our attention now to ring number three, the Blue Ribbon, being awarded for class number 182, the Australian Saddle Pony Mare or Gelding, not exceeding 12.2 hands. Congratulations to our winner, catalogue number 1403, Miss Sierra Park Ede from out there at Narandra with Calica Park Aristocrat. Second place going to catalogue number 1401, Miss Monty McEwa's nomination of Balingra Sailor. Third place going to catalogue number 1079, Miss Philippa Gardner and Miss Indy Gardner's nomination of Ashali. Play on words. Fourth place, catalogue number 1421, is the DNR show horses from Stock and Bingle with Whitmore Top Fashion. And fifth place going to catalogue number 1419, the Benton and Benton Hall family's nomination, Owen Dale Valencia and Catalogue number 1406 is in 6th place. I kid you not, this is how many people own this pony. Lindsay Douglas, Serendipity Lodge, Miss Isabella Brown, Miss Nerida Corbett, Corbin Park Pony Stud, Miss S&M McMaster, Miss J Walker, Miss P Williams, and Mrs Chloe Mulberry. Just to not be left out, Miss Samantha Crouch is also in there with Corbin Park Toy Boy. I try and get involved with a couple of these nice horses too. I'm like, I just want to be involved. Throw my name on one of these. Anyway, we are now watching number 1819, Matt Patterson's nomination, raced as the man, shown as the man, side by I'm Invincible out of the damn consulting. 
And uh, this is, I think we must be getting towards uh, the last few to work out here. Four to go in the Colonel AV Pope Cup. Thanks for joining us on the live stream. It's brought to you by the Thoroughbred Breeders who are bringing us the broadcast box today on day eight of the Sydney Royal Easter Show. This is catalogue number 1959 in the Colonel AV Pope Cup. Raced, didn't really race though, as our boy Reuben. I think I had one start at Grafton. And that was it. Made a debut in the show world, never looked back. This is Alana Richards' nomination. They had a fantastic Sydney Royal Easter show last year, you'll remember. And uh, took reserve champion at Grand National last week. Shows as Royal Blue, sired by Top Echelon out of the damn star of Tian. was our champion national hack last year at the Sydney Royal over 15 hands. Welcome the next of our classes here into ring number two. This is uh, class number 32, our Arabian derivative stallion colt, three years and over, over 14 hands in height. Two striking colts out in the arena here this afternoon. We wish all of our connections the best of luck as they compete here. In uh, front of Michelle Lando, our judge for the afternoon's classes in ring number two, Arabian derivative stallion or colt, three years and over, over 14 hands. Well, the chestnut gelding working out now is catalog number 1920. Won a maiden for $22,000. That um, Gosford back in 2012, raced as central. Exhibited by Emma Chisholm. Shows under the name Rosebray Spectre, side by Galileo. This is catalogue number 1920.
Well, our third last competitor to work out, Tim Dreverman, and uh, in a few moments' time, the 2024 name will be etched into the Colonel A.B. Pope Silver Cup Perpetual Trophy, and boy, are we looking at some history right now. We most certainly are. We go all the way back to 1950 when Miss M. Yates and Metexas won it. The next year, it was the year for Miss M. Coombs and Cade. In uh, 52, we saw Miss Maple Brown and Misa. In 53 and 54, Mrs. B. M. Stride and Gallant were victorious. 55, it was Mrs. R. A. Pye and Avalanche. In 56, G. B. S. Faulkner and Dark Bow. Gold Ross and L. R. Morgan won it in 57. In 58, Mrs. J. K. McKay and Bon Accord. T. A. and R. A. Field won it for the first time in 59. They also won it in 61 and 64. In the intervening year, in 1960, it went to J.K. McKay again, this time with Westwood Ho. Limelight and W.H. Wright won it in 62. In 63, it was Highball with the Parker family. Well, Noble Archer, as we mentioned, won it in 64 with Rock and Ruler, Mrs. J. Armour in 65. Well, the fields came back in 66 with Bailey Wick and took it out. W.A.R. Rowe and Alibi won it in 67. 68, it was Town Fair with the Finlaysons. Fields again with uh, Mapeza in 69, weren't they a force to be reckoned with? In the 70s, it, uh, 1970, it went to random with W.A. Jones. Holwood and B and Mrs. P. Rose won it in 71. And can I just introduce our second last Please horse do. to work out? It's catalogue number 1206. Man of Wood won $74,000 on the track, uh, trained by Gwen Markwell, based at Kembla Grange and uh, had uh, a big, his biggest race day under Ty England in the $25,000 Classic Day Class 2 handicap, defeating Ladabout Town and then ceased racing in 2015. Well, this horse also shows as a man of wood under Paul Warhurst, side by Doomsday and out of the dam Law Demi. We continue on our journey through history, Lindsay Douglas. Um, uh, just trying to remember where we got up. 71. 71 was Homewood with uh, B and Mrs P Rose. The fields came back in 1972 with Mazeppa and won it again. Mazeppa also won it in 75. What an amazing horse. AF and EM Finn Larson and PJ Latata with Midsummer Night in 73. 74 was Donegal. As we mentioned, Fields in 75. So in 1976, JB and Mrs. H.L. Crowley with W and W.J. Bridge with Mo Moliere? Moliere. Moliere. In 77, it was Vince Corvey with Pelly. In 78, it was W and C.A. Prattley with Regal Watch. Isn't that amazing? Warren Prattley out there judging today has won both the front, the, the oh, that is that crane, Prattley. yes, absolutely, the of crane course. and the Pope. In 1980, at the Easter show, it went to Easter Parade. It went to Picasso and VC Ward in 1981. In 82, Nice Guy. They also, uh, sorry, Picasso also got it in 83. Vince Corvey and L. Funch in uh, Trentfield in 84. 85, my birth year. The Maheen family and Judy Maheen went on to win what was called Showgirl back in the day at Sydney Royal, but uh, took out the Pope in 1984 with Galloping Gourmet. True Abel won it in 86 with uh, Mrs. A.M. Barber. In 87, it was the year for Tudor Park Madrid. And I think that was Marie Tompkinson who's now uh, overseas and uh, based in Europe as a dressage rider. Now, Tim, can I just introduce our final Please do. competitor to work I'd out? I'd be upset if you didn't. 1788, raced as All in Rhythm, won $126,000 on the track, 36 starts, five wins, um, had a 24% return on investment, if you'd backed uh, All in Rhythm throughout his career. Uh, at Goulburn, won the 30, 35 thousand uh, dollar race there beating Wimera and I'm just going to jump on the dry live stream and add a bit more info. You do that, we'll keep watching here. Well the atmosphere uh, 
getting a little too uh, all in rhythm today. Shown as rhythm with the wonderful Timothy Hadlow and Dell Jenkins. Aren't they great competitors? Uh, they did very well the other day in our thoroughbred gelding four year and over class, uh, not exceeding 16 hands, taking out first place. Sired by More Than Ready. And uh, we always love seeing the Hadlow brothers out here at Sydney Royal. They're phenomenal competitors. Go back to 1988 if we continue down memory lane. D.E. White, kindly thoughts, took the uh, Colonel A.V. Pope Cup. In 89, it went to Like a Lunch with the Adams family. The Mahoney family and Galloping Gourmet won it in 1990. So they won it five years earlier in 85, the Mahines, and uh, came back again in 1990. In 91, the Waterhouse, Waterhouse Fitzharding and McAdam combination had Power of Love. We saw uh, Channings and LM Tuis with uh, JM, who is at nomination in 92. 93 was Vienna After Dark. I remember that. Carolyn Wagner in Ark Royal in 94. 95 to Tides. And Final Scene in 96. Our horse chief steward here. Denise yes. Ovens, the Cleary family. That was hers. Oh, was it really? Absolutely. Of course, the Cleary brothers and L.A. Cleary. And in 97 to Trent Nathan with Kay Sutton. Lord Carrington with R.C. Davis and uh, Mrs. E. Barnes in uh, 98. 99, it was Guild Edge with Terry Van Heysen and Michael Christie. In uh, 2000, it was P. Bowman and G.E. Uh, G. de Malat with... Is it a tape? I believe so. In 2001, Royal Mile with Darren Telford and Ge Greg Geary. 2002, the Treneman family with Empire. It was Carolyn Wagner's year again. She's about to head overseas uh, to contend for a spot on the Olympic dressage team. So I hear. Uh, 2003, she was victorious with WS Black Label. Lamrack Dancing Poet in 2004. Oh, yes, uh, Brian Choles and Gary Beaton. In 2005, Regal Outline was successful. DP uh, Shamla in uh, 2005. It was the year for a very good friend of ours in Ashley Harris with Highbury in 2007, the lovely big grey hack. Ashley and Tyler, they have the Highbury Cup up at the Brisbane Ecker. Neil Carpenter and Mark Kenzig and Grandua won it in 2008. 2009, it was SLM Mind Games. Coho in 2010 with Rose Lip. 2011, DP Amazing and Dale Plum. High Fashion won it in 2012. That was the GC Equestrian Adam Oliver and Janice Elliott's Elliot, Elliot nomination. Ali Berrick and Sarah McMaster with Accelerate in 2013. DP Amazing with the amazing Dale Plum in 2014. Oh, I adored Joe Monda's Kakadu. That was uh, 2015. He was a superstar. Saw him in a lot of country shows, Joe. Uh, Stephanie Barrington at SLM Orlando won it in 2016. Edwina Cullen, Terry Van Heysen and Romsey Park in 2017 were victorious with Lords. Universal Stables with uh, Base won it in 2018. Oh, yes, Sienna Vassilopoulos. In 2019, it was Ali Berrick and Michelle LeBarn's Rolex 2. No competition in 2020. That's not a horse name, Joe that's just a fact. That's a fact for you. It was rivalry in 2021 with Universal Stables and Cassie Schmidt's nomination. Romsey Park and Sue Thompson in 2022 with Givenchy. Givenchy and Royal Blue, Christopher Laurie's nomination in 2023. So who will it be in 2024? Tim Treverman, I'm going to depart. Okay, you just do that. You head down to the ring. I'll hold the fort here. And uh, we look forward to bringing you all of the results when they come to hand. Well, results now of class number 32, our Arabian derivative, Stallion or Colt, three years and over, over 14 hands. Congratulations to catalogue number 1008. This is Romsey Maglucci from Middle Dural with Romank Drink Divine. Second place, going to catalogue number 1006, Mrs. Jenna Jacqueline Carrington from Oakdale with Arabic Kryptonite taking out second place. Well done to our winner there, the beautiful Romac Divine, exhibiting and winning class number 32, the Arabian derivative stallion or colt, three years and over, over 14 heads.
now welcome out the next of our classes here in front of us. Class number 185. This is the Arabian Saddle Pony Mare or Gelding, not exceeding 14 hands, to be ridden by a child under 17 years. Ladies and gentlemen, after a massive deliberation from our judges, we have the results of class number 507, the Colonel A.V. Pope, best gelding hack, over 15 hands. Ladies and gentlemen, around the NG Stadium, please join me in congratulating the winner, etching their name in history forever a day after, catalogue number, 1771, Mr. Riley Kent's chorus takes the Colonel A.V. Pope Cup for 2024. What a workout that was. It will certainly go down in history and Riley Kent, rightly so, is just taking a moment now. What a spectacular gelding, what a moment. Those ears are pricked up saying, yes, it's me. Give me that garland. I'm feeling myself out here, boys and girls. And our uh, judge, Warren Prattley, makes the presentation now of the blue ribbon. Well, I don't know how many we had out here in the beginning, Tim, but it was certainly over 30 exhibits lined up to take out the blue ribbon. No mean feat. We have the beautiful Conception Garlands being once again 
exhibited or donated by the Durant family. Sabrina Duranti making it the presentation and uh, a young lady who's no stranger to receiving a garland or two herself. Wonderful to have Thoroughbred Breeders Australia in the arena as well. With uh, represented today by Selena O'Gorman. Well, Warren, we'll walk over to be, make you part of this photograph, but I'd love to hear your comments on our winner. Well, he's a, mo he's a high quality horse. And even though he made a couple of errors early on, the overall quality of the animal is what got him the winner. And what year did you win this? <laughs> Around about the 1980s, a long time ago. We'll let you go and get the photos. Warren Pratley, one of our two judges here, alongside Sally McFadgett, a lovely exhibit here taking the win. Thank you. Yeah, we are just delighted with the quality of horse and we just think he was just such a true thoroughbred type and had such an exquisite straight, even stride and we just loved him. We both loved him. The runner-up in the Colonel A.V. Pope Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, around the NG Stadium, please join me in congratulating catalogue number... 1941, Mr. Joe Bailey's nomination, Double Bay. Well, Joe Bailey there with uh, catalogue number 1941, raced as Golden Boy. And Riley Kent, well, the horse that raced as Zunate, won $77,000, 32 starts for three wins and a bunch of placings. Without getting in the way of our photographers, we're going to jump on in here and see if we can get a couple of words from our successful competitors from another very strong lineup. Joe, all the way from Double Bay, what a win, what a placing! Congratulations to you. Thank you. It's a great thrill, and ma many thanks must go to my partner Michael Christie. Actually, my husband Michael Christie. I'm not used to that yet. And while, um, while I'm here, I'd like to thank Sydney's show. It's my favourite show. It's the best show in Australia. And this is such a thrill. I've come here since I was about five years old and I've watched the Pope Cup all that time. And I love it. Thank you. You'll certainly remember this one, sir. And we're getting some lovely photographs now of Riley Kent. Chorus or Zunate was successful on the track but a lot more successful in the ring all the feels out here today for you young man there is a chorus of people in the stands cheering you on um i'd just like to start with a huge thank you to everyone back at the stables my partner brock mum tina georgia sarah everyone who helped me get into the ring um a huge thank you to actually this beautiful horse bart he means the absolute world to me um i got him about just over 12 months and all I can say is he's been an absolute pleasure from the start to now. He really does mean the world and a thank you to the sponsors of the class, the show committee and everyone for putting on such a fantastic show. Riley, we won't forget this show anytime soon. Congratulations to you. Enjoy the moment. It's all yours. Brought to you by the Thoroughbred Breeders Broadcast Box and Cecilia O'Gorman. I know there's a lot of great days in racing, but this is one of the finest days in the thoroughbred industry. 
It is Lindsay and we're so happy to continue our association with the Pope Cup. It's a really special class and to see all these beautiful thoroughbreds out here today competing is just amazing. Um, so a big congratulations to our winner and to everybody. Um, I know a lot of hard work goes into turning these horses out so beautifully, so well done to you all. Riley Kent's a wonderful ambassador for the thoroughbred industry. For one, the way he cares and loves, uh, cares for and loves his horses is second to none. Uh, but the emotion that he shows out here, the persistence, he's, he's just such a consistent and kind competitor to see him get the win today. And a young gentleman too. Thoroughbred breeders love supporting the next generation. We do, we do. We're thrilled for Riley. Um, we are all about bringing through young people into our industry. We've got great career opportunities, great partners ways um, so to to see him succeed today was brilliant so congratulations Riley Kent Joe Bailey they'll lead us off in a lap of honor Tim Dreverman what a moment oh what a moment indeed it's been wonderful to be part of it our small part we play in the uh, thoroughbred breeders broadcast box to bring you the results to see the uh, joy well done to all the connections to our top 15 out in the arena today have all earned your stripes in the NG Stadium. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the magnificent proceedings. For all of you watching on at home, of course, Champion of Champions Day will be here on Monday. I don't believe it's live stream. So if you want to see who is going to be Champion Pony, Champion Galloway or Champion Hack, make sure you are here at the ground. Of course, it is the greatest show, the largest ticketed event in the Southern Hemisphere, the Sydney Royal Easter Show. We hope you've enjoyed viewing everyone here at the ground. Don't go anywhere. Plenty of action still to come from the NG Stadium. Well, there is certainly plenty of action. We can see the next